so much, Richard. Uh, you remember you recognize that the, the music, that's the music, but the thing from the love story, the movie. Uh, this, is a, this is a love song to Jesus. And you know, we can 
write our own love songs to Jesus. When we think about what he's done for us, how he cares for us, how he came and gave his life for us. You know, when, uh, when we were younger, and maybe some of us are even now, when we are in love, we write poems and we write songs to, to those that we love. We, have you ever thought about writing a song, love song to the one that cares more for you than anyone? That's what this was. It was a love song to Jesus. Thank you very much for that. And Richard, when we get back inside, I'd love for you to sing that for us again. Okay. If you have your Bibles, uh, go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. And I'll be reading uh, from the New King, New King James Version. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. See then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And our, our text for today, I'd like us to use Ephesians 5, verses 15 and 16. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. And uh, I'm reading from the, from the NIV this time. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. But be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Uh, you know, if 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 our faith to make a difference in every aspect of our lives, it should also shape how we think and live out our lives with the time that God has given us. We know that God created everything. So that makes him the owner of everything, right? In his grace, God placed man in his creation, placed us in his creation to manage and to care for the creation. So. We are mankind. We are the managers or stewards of all that God has created. A steward is a manager. So we are stewards of all that God created. Go, go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 28, and you will see what I'm talking about. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, and in the image of God he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every creature that moves on the ground. So God said, man, you manage and rule over everything that I have created. God wants us to know that we are stewards of everything that he has provided, and that includes time. God it provided and, and created time. So that includes time. We are the 
He stewards and manages of the time that God has given us. Now, time, however we view it, flies by time, flies. And there's only so much of it. But however we look at it, time flies, and there's only so much of it. And God has given each one of us a measure of time to live in these bodies. Because unless Jesus returns first, we're going to all die. So we only have so much time. So how are we using our time? Remember, I'm, I'm talking about stewardship now, how we manage. So how are we using our time? What will happen to us? What will happen to us when we're called before the judgment seat of Christ to give account of our use of the time that we have been given? There's a scripture I want us to look at real quickly, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. Remember, you know, we're, going to, we're going to have to give account of what we've done in this life after our salvation and account of how we've used our time. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 10. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We're confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. So time. Where do we get it? The first principle of stewardship, we've talked about that, I talked about it at the very beginning, is that God is the owner of everything, and we are stewards. God owns everything. We're his tenants here on earth. We are accountable, therefore, to him for the use of his gifts, and time is a gift. So we are accountable for the use of of the time that God has given us. God created time and gave it to us. Now, this is important. Time is a necessary gift and of utmost importance because all of the other gifts are conditioned on how you use your time. All of the gifts and the talents God has given us are conditioned on how we use our time. So time is a very, very important gift, and we need to... We need to use it wisely. God gives time to everybody equally. Others may have more talents or more spiritual gifts, but we all have the same amount of time. Every person has 60 minutes to the hour, 24 hours to the day, seven days a week, depending on what year, 365 or 366 days. No matter how rich we are, can't buy any more time. No matter how poor we are, we can't receive any less time. The president of the United States or the the CEO of the largest corporation in the world has no more time than you have or I have. Nobody has more time than another. It's how we use it. Now, Jesus was both urgent and careful about the use of God's given time. On one occasion, and, and I'm gonna, uh, I want to, to want you to go there. On one occasion, he said to something. He said to his disciples, uh, John chapter nine, verse four. John chapter nine, verse four. Jesus said, "As long as it is day." We must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no man can work. You only have so much time. God gives the time. He's the one that has given us time. So how do we use it? How do we make time 
or how do we use time or our stewardship of time? Now, our use of time, by our use of time, we're either faithful or unfaithful. We can make use of the time in the wrong way, or we can make use of it in the right way. Here's an example of, of the unused wise of time, use of time, unused, unwise use of time. Back to our text script, Ephesians 5, 15, and 16. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity or time because the days are evil. Now, sometimes we fail to make wise use of the time that God has given us. For one thing, we can sometimes just wish or waste our time away. For example, when we were children, little children, time just seemed to drag on. It seemed like Christmas would never come. The birthdays would never come. The school year would never end, so we're wishing the time away, right? We're wishing away. We want we want to grow up. We want to grow up quickly. But we're wishing the time away as children. Well, as we get older, kind of as teenagers, um, we fell in love. I thought we did, right? Uh, and we knew a few years had to pass. We were teenagers. A few years had to pass before we could get married and, and raise a family. So we wished the time away instead of using that time patiently. We could have used it. All right? We could wish time away. We could waste time away. We can be careless with time. Uh, Henry Thoreau said, you cannot kill time without it. And this is interesting. You cannot kill time without injuring eternity. And Victor Hugo also says something that's, that's also very impactful. As short as life is, we can make it shorter still by the careless waste of time. Remember, this is a gift from God, and we need to use it wisely because there's only so much of it. I don't have any more than you. You don't have any more than me. Uh, there are things that may take the enthusiasm out of the life of a Christian. There's some things that can take the enthusiasm out of our lives as Christians. One is to be careless with prayer. Two is to be careless with money. And three is to be careless with Time, any one of these three can make our lives miserable. I want to talk about time today and the careless use of time. We can actually be ruled by time. You know, we here in America have more time-saving devices, yet we have less time than anybody in the world. Because our perspective is wrong. We need a better perspective. We need, we have in, in the U.S., we have an abnormal, abnormal desire for hectic activity. We need to be busy, 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 busy. We, as a fact, matter of fact, we admire the person who is always rushing here and there, rushing to this appointment, rushing to that appointment, because we assume that that person must be very successful. We are very time-conscious people, so we can, or can be ruled by time. When we use time in the wrong way, time passes by, and with it, our expectations and our hopes. We waste time, our expectations, and our hopes are unfulfilled, just as if this was a fruit tree, for example, if it was not, if it was a fruit tree and it had buds, if the buds fell on the ground without producing fruit, that's unfruitful. 
use of our time or bad use of our time makes us unfruitful. On the other hand, on the other, I just talked about it, we can waste time, we can wish time away, we can can we rush, 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 and never take any time to do anything. On the other hand, we can use time the right way. Let's, again, let's go back to our text scripture, Ephesians 5, 15 to 16. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So how can we make the most of our time and opportunities? There's, there's four things I want to share with us, uh, four things we need to do in order to make the most of our time. One, we must determine our priorities. We have to decide what to do first. We can't do everything. We have to decide what to do first, so we have to decide what we want to give time to and then do it. I submit that we, that, that we give our time to the Lord's work and do it. We can't do everything, but set your priorities to do the Lord's work and do it. That's making wise use of the time. Or time. An old prop, there's an old proverb that says one has to spend money to make money. It's the same thing with time. You have to spend time to save time. To spend time to save time. The most efficient person gets the most done, in, that, that gets the most done in a 24-hour period is a person who has learned to make time work for him or her through careful scheduling, budgeting, and planning, we make time for those things that we consider most important. For example, if every morning we get up and decide that we want to spend however long, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever it is, in quiet time with God and praying, and reading scripture, that's good use of your time because the rest of the day is going to be a good day. You're going to have an efficient day because you started it with the Lord and the Word of God. Now, here's an example of setting the right priorities. You remember when uh, Jesus and his disciples went to uh, Mary and Martha and Lot Lazarus' house, and they had a meal. And remember, Martha was rushing around getting the meal, making sure everything was set, and the, if the food was being cooked, and Mary sat around at Jesus' feet, and Martha got upset about that. It's a lesson about priorities there. Let's, let me read that. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke 10, 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that to be, had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will be not taken away from her. We need to establish our priorities in our use of time. Remember, we only have so much, and we need to use it wisely. We also need to change our pace. And I was convicted of this when I read this and began studying this because I have been one who has been guilty of this. It's necessary to change our pace if we're going to avoid high blood pressure, heart disease, and a host of other illnesses. 
Now, at least we know of at least one time where Jesus told his disciples, "Hey, you guys need to just take a break. You need to we need to go somewhere and sit down and chill out." All right, let's go to Mark chapter six, verses thirty and thirty-one. Mark six thirty and thirty-one. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. They were busy, right? Really, really busy, 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 busy. They didn't have a chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. So a good use of time is to change our pace so we can think. If even Jesus needed to stop and rest, don't you think you need to rest too? We need to follow his example and set boundaries on our time in order to live our lives full of what God intended for us to do not what we think we're supposed to do. We need to slow down so we can do and live the way God intended us to live. We are actually commanded to rest. You know, Jesus told his disciples, come and let's rest. We are, that's actually a command to rest. Deuteronomy chapter 5, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your ox nor your donkey nor any of your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an unstressed arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The commandment about the Sabbath day says as much about rest as it says about anything. In fact, and check it out, This is the commandment that has the most written about it. The Sabbath rest commandment has the most written about it. Have you ever wondered how some people manage to get so much done in an average day, so much more than than others? How do they do it? Well, they stop, they pause. They take time to pray and to think and to meditate. Let me give you some scriptural examples of things to think about. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. In a hectic day, you need to slow down the rest for a little bit. Think about Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Then in Psalms 46.10, Psalm 46.10, he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still. Be still. Slow down. Change your pace. Psalms 19, verse 7. Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Let's stop and pause. Think, pray, and meditate. Make use of the time that God has given us. Be good stewards of the time. Now, rest may 
appear to be a period of inactivity, but it's during these times of rest that we can draw the resources of the mind and the spirit that give purpose and direction. The time we take the time to rest and speak and pray is not wasted time. That's the time we can draw on the resources that are in us. God has placed in us with the Holy Spirit. Now, the, 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 the artist, Leonardo, Leonardo da, Vinci was, da Vinci, was accused of wasting time once. And here's how he replied. When I pause the longest, I make the most telling strokes with my brush. Time to relax and recover, to think, and pray. We need a change of pace so that we can make wise use of the time that God has given us. We also, we're talking about good use of time, the best use of time. We need to concentrate on the main things, not the noise of life. We need to concentrate on the main things, not the noise of life. Because the noise of life will say, now hear this. You better listen to me. That's what the noise of life will say. But we need to concentrate on the main things. Jesus urged us to concentrate on the main things, the primary things. Let's go to, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Verses 33 and 34. Matthew chapter 6, verses 13 and 34. Let's concentrate on the main things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So let's concentrate on the main things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, this is both a command and a promise. Okay? The command is seek first his kingdom. The promise is all these things will be given to you as well. So this is both a command and a promise. And let me tell you what, I can tell you from personal experience that this works. You concentrate on the main thing, God's kingdom, all the other stuff will fall in place. It works, and it'll work for you. All you have to do is try it. Don't be afraid. Try it. Here's, what, here's something the Apostle Paul wrote uh, in his letter to the uh, Philippians. Uh, it's a Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Philippians 3, 12, 12 through 14. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Remember what I said? Concentrate on the main things. What Paul was saying was that he was not going to waste any more time worrying about the foolish mistakes and the sins of the past but he was concerned with the main thing, and he was going to press on toward the goal ahead. That's what we should do. That's great use of our time. Concentrate on the main things and then move out on that. God has forgiven you. Don't let the past slow you down because it will. We must dedicate our time to God. We need to offer God everything, not only our abilities, our money, our energies, but also our time. 
That's how we become good stewards of time. So what's the result? What's the result of making good use of the time, being a good steward of time? Well, first, first, we will multiply ourselves in his service. We will multiply our usefulness both to God and to our fellow man if we make good use of our time. The person who's organized, motivated, and dedicated in the use of time can accomplish more than several people who are careless, misuse time, and they become frustrated where time is concerned. So we can multiply ourselves in God's service. We can also, or will, also advance the work of the kingdom by making good use of our time. For example, for example, let's say that you give a tithe of your income, whatever it is, where it comes from, wherever, but you do it faithfully. You give a tithe of your income, but you become convicted or convinced that you need to do more. You decide now to tithe your time or spend some time. You may decide to take a day to man a prayer line. You may decide to take a day or an afternoon to go down to a mission and, and serve. You may decide to take a day uh, to go to a homeless shelter and just spend some time. What happens is in your service, you may get the opportunity to share Christ with some of the people that you come in contact with. And if some of those come to Christ because of you, you, you've made a decision for the kingdom. Remember, concentrate on the main things. You made the decision of the kingdom with your time, not just with your money. So we can make, if we make good use of our time, we can, make, we can multiply ourselves, our usefulness. We can advance the work of the kingdom. So you know, how, how might you serve today? How might you do that? Well, a servant's life isn't glamorous. A servant's life is not glamorous. It's often difficult. It's about someone else and their pain and their needs, and your work is likely to be unseen by the other world. But Jesus sees it. Jesus sees how you use your time, making wise use of your time. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25, verses 34 through 40. Matthew 25, 34 through 40. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the, crown, from the creation of the world. For when I was hungry, and you fed me, I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then those righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospi hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. That's a great use of our time. If you use the time wisely, we will advance the kingdom. Again, the main thing. We're going to advance the kingdom. Last of all, we use, best use of our time. When we use our time wisely, we will bring glory to God. The faithful steward of time is fruitful, and a fruitful Christian brings glory to God. A fruitful Christian brings glory to God. Now, Jesus said, right, the way to bring the glory to God is fruit. You produce some fruit, right? So good use of our time, we're fruitful. Go to John chapter 15, verse 8. John 15, verse 8. 
Because if we use our time wisely, we're going to bring glory to God. John 15, verse 8. This is my Father's, this is true my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So we make good use of our time. We're fruitful. We're concentrating on the main things. We bring glory to God. In the final analysis, it's only by deliberately paying attention to and giving our primary commitment to eternity that we can prevent time from turning our lives into a pointless exercise. If we waste our time, then our lives can become pointless. Not everything, but on an open, you look at the lives overall, our existence has been pointless if we don't serve the kingdom and advance the cost of the kingdom of God. If we make wise use of our time, everything else will fall into place. But we must deliberately pay attention to and give a primary commitment to eternity. Use our time for eternity. So use it wisely. Don't waste it. We've talked about ways to do that today. Let's keep that in mind. Now, I've been talking about the stewardship of time, but I would not be a good steward of time if I ended this message and fail to urge any of those who are listening on the phone or even here who are, have never given their lives to Jesus Christ and are unsaved. And un, unsaved. You know, what Paul said, uh, again, we're talking about time, what Paul said uh, in, uh, in his letter to the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 6, verse 2, he said, Now, behold, now is, accept, is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So if I, if I didn't talk about that today, if I didn't talk about salvation today, I'm not making the use of my time. I'm not a good steward of time. We've been talking about today. You know, salvation is God's gift of everlasting life. It's freely given to anyone who wants it. Salvation is a matter, personal matter, between God and an individual. Everyone who goes through life will decide where to spend eternity before dying. Everyone must decide where they will spend eternity. For those who accept God's free gift of eternal life, they will be in the presence of God forever. That's the most wonderful place imaginable. For those who reject salvation or neglect to choose God and accept his free gift of, of eternal life, they will be condemned, unfortunately, to the lake of fire and be eternally tormented. There's no guesswork involved. You have to make a decision one way or the other. Jesus Christ made salvation possible. He came to earth from heaven and paid for the sins of the world on the cross. When Jesus was crucified, everyone's sins were in judge, judged in him. Everyone's sins were judged in Jesus Christ when he was crucified. That means everybody's sins are paid for, and the door is wide open to salvation. Salvation is as simple as, simple as believing in Jesus Christ and confessing it. The decision is personal. The solution is real. Here's what happens. Here's what you need to do. Those of you that have not accepted, accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the scriptures say at Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, say this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. If, you, if you've done that for the first time, 
Anybody who's done that for the first time, tell somebody. Don't keep it a secret. Tell somebody. Tell somebody that how, how Jesus has saved you. Tell somebody how, how Jesus has rescued from you from torment. Tell somebody else. Because what you say to them might just be the thing they need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. So remember, remember what we talked about, time. Make the use, best use of your time because you only have so much. God placed us here to be stewards of everything, and that includes the time that he has given us. So God bless you. I love you. Uh, it's wonderful seeing you and talking with you. Uh, we'll, we'll see you or talk with you next week. Look, this is what I want you to do for me. Be safe, okay, these next few days. Be safe. Uh, know that God loves you. Know that God protects you. Know that God cares for you. I want you to be safe. If you haven't voted, you can still vote. You know, we got we got a little time. You can go to, uh, I think it's lavote.com or something. You can go on the Internet and look, and you see where the closest uh, voting center to you is. Uh, you can vote. you still got time. So if you, if you haven't voted, please vote, because I do believe that, that voting is part of our duty as Christians. Because if we don't vote, we have no hand in what is happening in this world today. So vote if you haven't. Uh, let's be safe, and I'll, I'll, and I'll see you all and talk with you uh, next week. For I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. And here's a hug. I love you, love you, love you.